Are you a ham radio operator interested in digital modes? This video provides a sample QSO using the conversational digital mode called PSK31. Welcome to Ask Dave, episode 27, the third in the series on digital modes. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Lots of hams are interested in digital modes. The popular PSK31 is one such digital mode. It allows two hams to have a conversation, computer to computer. It's not unlike texting, except it's much easier to type out messages, and there's no cell phone bill to pay. Just like all HF modes, you'll be meeting new people all the time. PSK31 is a great way to get started with HF Digital. This video consists of a sample QSO or conversation over the air. As I was cleaning up the log entry for the previous QSO with KF9KV, I noticed that I was being called as shown in the orange ellipse. We see him calling me twice, then DE for from, then his call sign N7TES three times, then PSE for please, and then KN for go only, meaning he was turning it over to me and didn't want any other stations jumping in. <laughs> Notice his signal on the waterfall diagram. It comes in very nicely. Down here you can see some information about the selected signal. It's quite strong with a 15 dB signal to noise ratio and the signal is of pretty high quality with an intermodulation distortion measure of minus 27 dB. Okay, so I click on his call sign which puts it up here in the QSO information area. This is good because I'm about to use a macro to answer his call. This line here contains the macros, 12 of them, each accessible by clicking on it. These are all programmable. I'm going to use ANS for answer. It will recognize the other station's call sign. Note that this is the macro I might use to answer a CQ. I'm not answering a CQ, plus N7TES's signal is quite strong, so I do a bit of quick editing while the contents of the macro are still in the transmit buffer. I cut out all but one of the instances of my call sign, and then also cut off the KN and the little caret R, which is the symbol you can put in the transmit buffer to cause FL Digi to go back to receive. Here I insert my name. Note I'm not using a macro, but I could have put all this in a macro. I also add my location and give him a signal report of 599, which reflects his excellent signal. Note I make a mistake here due to not being completely familiar with the way FL Digi works. Over here, you can see that my station is still in transmit, transmitting a signal with no content, as you can see by what looks like railroad tracks on the display. Okay, I figure it out. The buffer cursor needs to be nudged ahead to get past the caret R to switch to receive. Notice the waterfall display. Upon turnover, the railroad tracks become a single line. This is what turnovers look like on PSK31. Okay, now he starts transmitting. First, he provides a signal report, then his name, John. I click on his name, which puts it in the operator field as John up here. His QTH, or location, is Puyallup, Washington, and John, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing it. Now, I'm trying to select the word Puyallup to mark it as the QTH, but as you can see here, I am still gaining experience with FL Digi, and I end up overriding his name with the QTH. Clearly, more practice will help. 
He provides his locator or Maidenhead Grid Square CN87TD. Then he turns it back to me. Note this strange signal on the waterfall. This appears to be a single tone that's moving around in frequency rather randomly, as though someone is transmitting key down while twiddling with the frequency knob. Note that where it crosses John's signal, it interferes and an error is copied. Okay, there's the single line indicating turnover. As soon as I see that little line, I want to transmit. I use a different macro which puts my rig in transmit and sends John's call followed by mine. Okay, now I'm transmitting. You can see that no signals are being received. You see my transmitted signal on the waterfall and the transmitted text appears in the receive buffer in red as it's transmitted. In the transmit buffer, text is converted from black to red as it is transmitted. FB stands for fine business, a very common idiom in ham radio. I send some freeform text without using any macros. Note that I can backspace with corrections even though the character has already been transmitted. John's system will do the backspace and the correction in real time. Here I'm telling him about my station, a common thing to describe on the second go around. I could use a macro for this since the information is the same every time. I tell him about the power I'm running, which is only about 30 watts. That means I've got my transmitter throttled way back from its usual 100 watts. I do this for two reasons. First, it helps ensure my transmit circuits are in their most linear range. Second, there's no need for high power on PSK31. If you transmit more than this power, it makes your signal so strong that it causes others to have problems with reception even if they are not tuned in on your signal. Now I note a problem. Somehow I've picked up his QTH and put it into the name field. So I say, back to you Puyallup, rather than back to you John. Oops. <laughs> okay, I correct that while waiting for him to transmit. Notice that while I'm doing that, he's continuing to transmit. I've frozen the receiver panel while getting his name in the right place. So I'll have to go over here to the right to drag the screen down to real-time reception. I also fix the QTH. Okay, now we're back to real-time. He sends me a comment about how he used my videos to study for his amateur extra examination. Now he's telling me about his station. He has an Elecraft K3S, a very nice radio. He also has his power throttled back. When he says he has an inverted V up about 35 feet, he means the apex is at 35 feet. The ends slope down from there. And he finishes his macro with a back to you. Oops, he's stuck in transmit. He tries a different macro and the handover is accomplished. One thing to note about almost every digital mode is that only one person can talk at a time. That's not true for all digital modes, just the vast majority. Okay, I note that I'm glad he finds the videos useful.
I ask his permission to use this QSO as an example. He replies with permission. Note the example of his backspacing to correct a typo. I come back to him and note that I need to get back to my script writing. The script I'm talking about was for Ask Dave 25. I make note I'm using FL Digi for my example because it's free, so other hams can emulate this video without incurring extra costs. I pass on to him my thanks, say 73, and turn it back to him. Note that my macro includes the date and the time. This is the ending time for the QSO. Fortunately, the system captures the start time. John says he'll look forward to the video and notes some technology he also uses. He notes how I can QSL. He uses Logbook of the World, the ARRL electronic system, or I can send him a paper QSL direct to his callbook address. He notes that I can dispense with the self-address stamped envelope. He notes 73, meaning best wishes, and his macro gives the date and time of ending. And there you have it, a sample PSK31 QSO. As you noted, you can put commonly transmitted information into the macros, or you can just type freely. Either way works fine. This episode's photo goes a little further afield than normal. 
Since John, N7TES, lives in the Pacific Northwest, I chose a photo from the neighboring state of Oregon. I took this photo during a helicopter ride, and it shows the Yakina Head Lighthouse near Newport. Hams have an affinity for lighthouses, and periodically there are efforts to put these on the air. Fittingly, this activity is called Lighthouses on the Air, and Yakina Head Lighthouse is USA-907. Okay, that's a pretty simple demonstration, but it shows that you can do it too. I hope to see your signal on the waterfall someday soon. If you liked this video, please share it with your friends. I urge you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos. I have a tip jar on my YouTube channel page and also on my website at ke0og.net. The whole purpose of this series is to answer your questions about ham radio, especially those of interest to those new to the hobby. You can ask questions by commenting on any of my videos on YouTube, preferably on the one most directly related to your question, or you can pose a question directly at www.ke0og.net slash ask-dave. Until we next meet, 73.